what were some of the things where you flipped, mm. where what you saw pre, and now you're on the inside, what flipped on you? The biggest flip was media. The, the biggest flip out there was news. I, when I started seeing what real intelligence looks like and how real intelligence is collected, how information is vetted and processed and synthesized and turned into something useful, and then I would read the news, I realized that the news is garbage. Like the, even the best news sources out there, the most centrist, the most uh, highly rated news sources out there, they are still a far cry from what they were in the 1950s. When journalism was alive, when there were still laws in place that forced you to have fair and balanced news, right now, news, news organizations focus on feeding their audience base. That's what they do. And if they get too far off of their audience base, then they start to see a decrease in ratings and a decrease in, in ad revenue. And they, they can't have that, especially not now that people don't buy newspapers. So that was a massive flip for me. Some of the other flips were the French. I went, I was a military officer. You, you, were, you were in the military. Nobody says good things about the French in the military. We make fun of them all the time, right? This is how the French go to war, right? We make fun of them all the time. <laughs> You get into the intelligence service, the DGSE is scary. They are so well funded. They are so technically adept. They are hunting down corporate and economic espionage secrets from us, and we don't even know they're there. They are super powerful. Had no idea that was happening. No idea at all. And then, you know, Mossad has a reputation. Mossad is actually, when you deal with them in real life, they're pretty reasonable people. They just have the authority to do some crazy shit compared to what we do in the United States. But generally speaking, like you sit down, you have a beer with them, like you were saying about the trifecta, right? You're Justin Timberlake, they can dance, they can act, they can yeah. sing, right? You sit down with, with a Mossad officer and you're like, you seem like a fair and reasonable person who is also protected by law like and able to just kill somebody on the spot. I have to ask five levels up whether or not I'm allowed to slap somebody in the, in the belly when they're being interrogated in Guantanamo Bay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, and there's just, so there's all sorts of different things like that. Then I also uh, started to learn how scary terrorists actually were. Um, you know, the world knew about Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda, by the time that Al-Qaeda was a mainstream thing, Al-Qaeda wasn't actually that scary. They did, they were well-funded. They had organization and bureaucracy and reach, but bureaucracy slows you down. ISIS was terrifying. ISIS is still in a phase where it's recruiting what's known as lone wolf terrorists. Lone wolves are basically people they radicalize and encourage to act and operate independently and alone. Hmm. So then there is no communication channel anywhere of anybody saying, hey, I'm going to hit this target this way. What do you think? If there's no communication, there's no way to collect intelligence. These lone wolves can just go out and do whatever they think they're going to do. And they've got the permission of the organization and they have, you know, the, the praise of the caliphate behind them. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's scary stuff. Exactly man. what happened with Salman Rushdie. He was a lone wolf and his mother just disowned him. Did you see what she said about him? He just said, she's like, I can no longer support him being my son. It's uh, nuts. That's That that world is a yeah. terrifying world that the average American has no idea L about. Let me ask you, because Pat framed the question with your perspective, what, what has shifted. You've been pretty vocal about... Um, perception versus perspective, right? Getting out of your own shoes and looking to the eyes of others. He also framed it with, um, you know, what, what you said, the media, and you've been pretty vocal about perception perspective. We also talked about your wife, how when she kind of got red pilled into the real world, how she's went from being a progressive liberal to being more center. Same yep. thing with you, I, I assume is right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't, if you're a super conservative, you're not trying to go to Africa to like save children, right? You're trying to build a business <laughs> or do something that, that boosts the economy in some way, shape or mm -hmm. form. So I, we were both moved very, very, very far to independent center. Once we started realizing not necessarily that there was like a liberal narrative and it really frustrates me when I hear people go off the deep end about all these liberal conspiracies and these liberal narratives. The, the truth is that liberals are just, that, that whole media is feeding its own base. And it's feeding a base of people who don't make a lot of money, who don't have a lot of education, who, who are struggling to set themselves up financially. So they want to believe that someone else should take care of them. And they mm -hmm. want to believe that someone else should help them. And they want to believe that, they, that a larger big brother government should be on their side. But what ends up happening across the board time and time again is your 27-year-old liberal becomes a 32-year-old parent with a career or a business, and then their perspective shifts. Because mm -hmm. now they got to protect what they have. they got to protect their family. they got to take care of their people. They've got to make sure that the future generation, because now there's a child. 
you've got to protect your child, but you also need a military to protect your child. So you know what? If I have to pick between who lives and who dies, my child lives, mm. somebody else dies. Mm-hmm. So you're like a living, breathing case, same with your wife of, you know, the, the famous phrase, if you're young and you're not a liberal, you have no heart. And if you're older and, and you're, you're not a conservative, you have no brain. Is that kind of what your <laughs> the process you went through? Yeah. It's like, I mean, those every, all of these idioms and all of these, uh, all of these, uh, uh, stereotypes, right? They mm-hmm. they happen for a reason. They happen because a normalized, statistically relevant number of people start to follow in these certain trends. It doesn't mean it's right for everyone, but mm-hmm. it's right for a majority of people. If you like this short clip, make sure you click here to see the next clip or here to see the full podcast episode.